Prince Harry is not passing down the title of Earl of Dumbarton to Archie because it contains the word dumb in it. And yes, this is a re-upload. Had to remake the video. Subscriber rightfully pointed out an error. Sorry about that. <laughs> Opinion Corner. Hello there, Babs and Babettes, and welcome back to the SBE channel. And yes, Earl of Dumbarton title will not be passed down to Archie, as Prince Harry is worried that it would be a matter of bullying. He is concerned that if he was to give Archie the title of Earl of Dumbarton, because it contains the word dumb in it, Archie may be mocked for this. Obviously, dumb is a term used quite widely in America, less widely over here. Now, of course, uh, no one wants to see their child get mocked for their name. However, I would say that, unfortunately, some kids can be very cruel, and often any title or any name can be mocked. Prince Harry was presented with this subsidiary title in 2018, when he married Meghan by Her Majesty the Queen. The Earl of Dumbarton title was originally created in 1675 for Lord George Douglas due to his services in the Franco-Dutch War. A very noble title and well respected. Tarchi will not be receiving that title as Prince Harry believes that it has the word dumb in it so it will be used to bully. And so Archie will not be getting that title. The reason that I believe this has come up at the moment is because Prince Charles once he becomes king, wishes to create uh, a slimmed down monarchy. Which means it may be unlikely that Lilibet or Archie will be princess or prince. If Prince Charles does change the King George V convention, where grandchildren of the monarch have the title of prince or princess, this would mean that Archie may have no title in future when Charles becomes king. And of course, though, we know that Harry and Meghan do not care about the titles. It is a little bit confusing when you think about it. First, they say that they don't want Archie or Lilibet to have any titles at all. But on the Oprah Winfrey interview, they state quite clearly that Archie was blocked from having a title. Of course, we all now know that this was due to the King George V convention, meaning that he could not have a title until... Charles becomes king. Not because of anything else. Frankly, to my mind, I don't think if they don't want to give Archie the title of Earl of Dumbarton, it's absolutely fine. But to state to worry it might be mocked because it has the word dumb in it, frankly to me, seems absolutely ridiculous. So it seems that at the moment Prince Harry will remain the Earl of Dumbarton, but will not pass it down to Archie. Maybe. The title of Earl of Dumbarton could be presented to somebody else within the actual war working royal family. Seeing as they separate from the institution, they've gone over to the USA in their 16 bathroom mansion. Which of course is quite incredible when you consider that Prince Charles, as Harry quoted in the Oprah interview, literally cut off financially. Which brings me on to my next topic. It has been proven, beyond doubt, that Prince Charles did pay Harry a large amount of money. And this was to help him transition from moving from the UK and being within the institution of the royal family over to the United States. This was a sum of around £4.4 million. Pounds. Considering the amount of money also that Princess Diana left him, I would say that him being taught, you know, him saying to us, to everyone, that no, I was literally cut off financially. You've left the institution. You've went over to the USA. Prince Charles paid you a large amount of money. If that's what you call cut off financially, goodness, goodness me. On Good Morning Britain, this was actually discussed. Dickie Arbiter, who is the former uh, press spokesman for the Queen, actually made a very, very good point. I didn't see Dickie. It is a discrepancy, and Clarence House is not going to rely about the substantial amount because these figures are up for scrutiny by MPs. So they have to be absolutely clear on, on what's happened to the money. Harry, he was a little bit economical with the truth. Yes, he, in theory, he was cut off because he finished work 
in March. His last job, official job, was the 9th of March when he went to the Commonwealth Service at Westminster Abbey. After that, he was no longer a working member of the royal family, but it was, the official money was taken up to the end of the financial year, which is the 5th of April. Subsequently, Prince of Wales did pay a substantial mm. amount, you say the summer. What is the summer? Meteorologically, it's the end of August. Astrologically, it's the end of September. By which time, if you take September, he'd signed a lucrative deal with Netflix, signed a lucrative deal at the end of the year with Spotify, you know, how long can a parent support a child? Yes, we, we're living in an age of the bank of mum and dad, but most youngsters uh, don't have yeah. several million dollars. Chris. You know, it's hugely <laughs> important. And security in this country is covered by the Home Office, i.e. Metropolitan Police. When they go abroad, uh, if they're working members of the royal family, they're still covered by, by the Home Office. Mm. But Harry chose to be financially independent. He left this country, went to Canada, then went to the United States. And yes, the general impression was that he should be paying for security. That takes a large chunk out yeah. of your earnings. So yes, he's signed with Spotify, he signed with Netflix, lucrative deals, um, and they help to pay for the security. But you've got to ask yourself, if they're so tight and strapped for money, why move into a 10 million pound house with nine bedrooms and 16 bathrooms? You cut your coat according to your cloth. Mm. You start smaller and you work up. And I think he makes a very valid point there. Because surely, if they have left the royal family and they kept saying they wanted to be financially independent, that's exactly what they got. At the end of the day, the institution of the monarchy cannot keep supplying security at taxpayer expense in order to pay for royals that have left the job. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. And also might I point out that Her Majesty the Queen is not about to do that. She will not let pay taxpayers pay for security when they're not even in the job. And he's exactly right when he says about you cut your coat to the cloth that you have. They could have got a small house. They could have got a small, modest house. No. They had to go for the 16 bathroom mansion. And 4.4 million pounds is not being cut off. I'm sorry. It's not. I mean, I'd love 4.4 million pounds. That'd be lovely. I'd spend it wisely, of course. Wouldn't spend it all on sweets. But do you, do you see what I mean? This, this whole thing is... Ludicrous, and every time it does seem the further we go ahead, Babs and Babette, more and more statements they made on that interview are being debunked. And frankly, I think that sometimes, in my own personal opinion, of course, because this is all my own personal opinion, just saying for the video's sake, uh, I would say that actually, um, when you tell too many twisting of truths, shall we say. They can come back to bite you in the gluteus maximus. And obviously, they have been in the papers again recently. Uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago when the BBC put out a statement saying that Prince Harry did not discuss the name choice of Lilibet with Her Majesty the Queen. Obviously, Lilibet being a very personal name to her. However, Prince Harry did not just come out and make a statement just saying, yes, I did discuss it with my grandmother. Instead... He then went straight in for the legal team. And because the BBC got this source from inside of the palace, it is rather peculiar to me that he would want to sue the BBC because then he would technically also be going against the palace. I don't know, but seven days after your child's birth, I would just make a statement. Why, why threaten legal or to get legal teams involved or lawyers or... Anything like that. Oh, sorry. Yes. Well, papers. So while Harry is refusing to hand down titles because it's Earl of Dumbarton with the word dumb in it. And while he is threatening to sue the BBC. Well, well Prince William has been doing some incredible work. And the amazing thing is, Prince William seems to be keeping calm carry on. Now we know full well that there is a bridge to be rebuilt between Prince Harry and Prince William. To my mind, I think they are very, very different people. Prince William has obviously been working on his Earthshot project. And he has announced the Earthshot Prize. And it would also be headed by Sir David Attenborough. This, to my mind, 
is a brilliant thing. It's a fantastic thing, and it's also great because it's not lecturing. It took them a while to get this project off the ground, and it was in the background. Prince William never really mentioned it before, until it was announced last year. And when it was announced last year, we got to think, it was done with, this is what we're doing, this is the prize that we're going to, you know, bring out, Earthshot Prize, to help help the climate change and help climate. It wasn't done to lecture. It wasn't done to do what, well, it wasn't done in the way that Prince Harry did it, which was to go on stage and say, you can't go on holiday, you can't go on holiday, you can't go on holiday. Excuse me while I just take my private jet, uh, and I'm just going to go off to, oh, I don't know, wherever I want. Join me for the first ever Earthshot Prize Awards where we'll unveil five global prize winners and their game-changing solutions to repair our planet on October the 17th, here in London. The last thing I just wanted to quickly discuss, Babs and Babettes, is the fact that Prince Harry did arrive back in the UK today. And almost half an hour after Prince Harry arrived back, her Majesty the Queen was actually photographed driving towards Frogmore Cottage, where Prince Harry is currently residing. Now, I don't think this being Her Majesty the Queen, extremely dignified as she is, I don't... Some papers have made out she's going there to give him a right good talking to. I don't believe that's the case. I actually think the Queen is going there just to say that you are still very much loved. There may be a lot of... Bridges to be rebuilt. I think the Queen is always going to have a door open for Prince Harry. But between Prince Harry and Prince William, there is a rather big... I would say there's actually quite a chasm between the two at the moment. And it will take some time to repair, if it can be repaired. But I don't think 100% trust is ever going to be fully achieved, unfortunately. Harry left the royal family to gain independence, financial independence. He has been given that. He's gone to the United States, and then all he can do, and we see it day by day, and I keep, to be honest, Babs and Babbits, the reason that I uploaded my video in a bit of a rush, which is why I made some errors, so I do apologise about that, but nonetheless, my opinion still remains the same. It seems that no matter what we do, it's continuous. It's continuous bombardment, bombardment. And, uh, well, I think we all know, and my subscribers as well, know where I stand on this matter. However... I do hope that Prince William and Prince Harry can set aside their differences for the unveiling of Princess Diana's statue. Just a quick update as well, Babs and Babettes, about the channel. I'm going to continue uploading, but due to some personal circumstances, my uploads may be a bit longer in between videos, but I will upload when I can. And also, I would just like to give a big shout out to Tom, one of my subscribers, and he has supported the channel. Thank you very much for your support, Tom, and also every subscriber that's subscribed to the channel so far. Um, I hope you enjoy the shout out, Tom. So, Babs and Babbits, I'm going to leave the video there. And uh, again, I apologise for the previous upload. It was a bit rushed and I made a few errors. So thank you for those subscribers that pulled me up on that one, and rightly so too. Um, but, uh, yes, won't happen again. Uh, to be honest, I've had my, uh, first jab, uh, on Friday, so it, it has made me a bit, uh, light-headed, shall we say. But I'm not using that as an excuse. Sort of, sort of. Let me off this once, Babs and Babettes. Let me off this once. But, uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe. Go and like the uh, Facebook page. It's in the description below. The link is in the description below. I need to get this right. The link to the Facebook page is in the description below. I post updates. I post projects, videos, upcoming stuff. Uh, on then sometimes just random little historical facts. So if you wanted to keep up to date, just go and like that. And also, don't forget to ring that notification bell. As for now, Babs and Babettes, I am going to say, keep calm, carry on, stay positive, and I shall see you in the next video. Tati tati bye, toodaloo, God save the Queen!